Mr Speaker. Andrew Bailey. Thank you. Mr Speaker, it's a pleasure to be talking on the taxation annual rates for 2016-17 closely held companies and remedial matters bill. Mr Speaker, uh, in the Finance and Expenditure Committee, of some of the members are actually in the House tonight, which is good to see, we've considered a number of different tax uh, matters during the course of the year, all seeking to continue to improve our tax system, to make it simpler, to maintain its integrity, and it's a continual evolution of what we're trying to do with our tax system. And I'd have to say to you, Mr Speaker, most people around the world look at our tax system and regard us with a sense of envy because we have a very simple, clear tax structure. So it's at a, at a personal tax level, we only have four different uh, tax levels. Company tax is very simple to understand, partnership, all those arrangements are very, very simple. And that has been an ongoing process of this government to make sure that what we have in place is something that people can understand easily, can engage with, and can pay their due taxes. And I, I would hasten to note, uh, Mr Speaker, that uh, one of the big transformation projects the Inland Revenue are undertaking at the moment, a billion dollar project, the first rollout of that will be uh, changes to the GST regime uh, next year, which is going to make it a lot easier for companies, and smaller companies in particular, to make their commitments around GST. But ultimately, we also want to see our smaller businesses paying their taxes as they go. Pay as they go system, moving away from a provisional tax system, which I think is a very good measure that has been introduced in the recent budget. But, Mr Speaker, this um, particular bill uh, deals with uh, a few changes. First of all, it uh, amends the Income Tax Act, the, uh, the Tax Administration Act, the Goods and Services Tax Act, Stamp and Check Duties Act, Student Loans, Income Tax, and uh, also the GST Grants and Subsidy Order 1992. So the particular things I just want to focus on, at a high level, uh, first of all, it's about um, constraining or reducing or correcting uh, issues relating to land tating. Secondly, it's about ensuring that the Working for Families tax package is maintained. We know how important that is to most uh, New Zealand families. We want to make sure that that uh, package continues to operate in the way it should be to support our lower income families. Thirdly, it uh, introduces or allows or permits uh, 14 new charities. As you're probably aware, Mr Speaker, charities are reviewed every year. Is, I think from memory is about 2,500 that are reviewed to make sure that they are of a charitable status, they are meeting their commitments, and as a result of that, there's 14 new charities being introduced this year. And it also seeks uh, to set the uh, income tax levels for 2016-17 financial year, which, of course, Mr Speaker, is essential for the government if we are to continue to remain in business and do all the good things that we're trying to do. I just want to focus on a couple of little issues. One is we are changing the rules relating to look-through companies. Uh, so as many of you are probably aware, they are similar to partnership arrangements, and uh, we're making some specific changes around those to make sure that people are taxed at their uh, personal level and reducing the complexity around those look-through companies. Second thing is we are specifically targeting where uh, non-residents have uh, provided debt to a New Zealand entity, uh, might be a branch or some uh, structure here in New Zealand, and we've targeted that to make sure that uh, appropriate interest has been paid on that. I'm sure the opposition will be very uh, pleased to hear about that measure. We want to make sure that uh, non-resident withholding tax is paid for related party debt where it involves non-residents. We're also um, making changes around uh, deducting GST on capital raising. So for most companies going out and capital raising, and normally they'll get professional advice, they need to be able to go and get GST, uh, they need to be able to get that advice. Normally that comes at a cost with GST. What, it, what we're making sure is making sure that is standard and actually did, uh, have the ability to deduct that GST, because at the moment they cannot deduct the GST portion.
And then we're making some changes around the aircraft maintenance and uh, technical amendments around there. So those are the key aspects of the, this bill, Mr Speaker, and I look forward to working with the committee and the House as we work through this process. The Honourable